This is going to be fascinating. I would suggest the little bit I know, she'll say less. Do you presume that? I don't think so. Not in her news conference. She's probably going to be about the same as she was up on Capitol Hill. Extremely accommodating, extremely expansive in terms of what she says. Uh, I have no reason to expect anything different. However, the interesting thing is going to be in the statement this time because the Fed is going to do a recall this time. Uh, it, it's got a phrase in there that they, they've had since December of 2012, and that's the 6.5% mm -hmm. threshold. The zero rate basically will be appropriate as long as the unemployment rate remains above 6.5%. The market percent. presumes that will be pulled out. Yeah, and just like the GM equipment, it's not working anymore. they got to pull that out because we're at 6.7%. The unemployment rate came down so fast, much faster than they thought that it's not okay. providing the forward guidance. Mike, is this a would. victory lap? for Evans of Chicago and Rosengren of Boston? I mean, they were way out front on this, this vector of unemployment improvement. Well, they can look back and say maybe they accomplished something if uh, you can make the argument that that helped hold down interest rates, but it takes it off the table. Now we go back to being vague. What is the Fed really thinking? We use what they call, remember Jim Boyle told us on this show, qualitative measures yeah. of uh, the I employment rate. Being vague means um, having a more lengthy and wordier statement. Credit Suisse put together a great chart. You had that chart compared, earlier. Yeah. yeah, that compared the number well, of words in the Fed yeah. statement and uh, the Fed's growing balance sheet and how both have really gone straight up. When you read the Fed statement, do you come away with a clear understanding of what they intend? Well, I do, but I do this for a living. The question is, do investors do it? And I brought along a show and tell here. This is the December Fed sta okay. the January Fed statement. Long, this is yeah. the most recent Fed what is that, statement. Like point nine font. This is on radio, the Mr. McKee's holding up a single yeah. piece of paper, fully this, lined. <laughs> this is the original Fed statement, the first one that Alan Greenspan ever put out. Which is out, a quarter of a page. Ninety-nine words. Quarter of a page. Yeah. Quarter of a page. 99 words, 830 words. Yeah. Right. So there's quite a difference. I mean, Al, uh, Adam, you used to trade. I mean, if you were on a desk, which one is more clear for you? Yeah, I, I mean, I, 832 words. All you're doing is looking at the first line, trying to pick up a couple of keywords. And, and If you had a question for Janet Yellen today, what would Michael McKee ask? how are they going to communicate that they're ready to change rates? Now, obviously, they're not ready to do that. That's not going to come until 2015 or perhaps later. But the question is that everybody on Wall Street is going to want to know is how are we going to know that? We could, in the past, look at your 6.5% guidance or your date guidance, which they used to use before that. But now what do we do? How do we know? I can't concentrate. Can I rip up the script? Yeah. Are you really going to spring training? <laughs> later are, this are you week, really? Later this week, we're going to go down and do a story on... Co uh, communities building stadiums to attract teams. You, you will do, you, you, I'm, just, I, I'm not on speaking terms. Well, 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 but, but hey, do, it, do it now before rates go up and those stadiums are exactly. too expensive but, to finance. But to make Tom even more angry, we're going to go down and see the Red Sox new spring. You're just absolutely stadium. killing me.